Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son did manifest himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open, we pray thee, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other words and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
first letter of Peter. And if you invoke as father him who judges each one impartially according to his deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the future ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the end of the times for your sake. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere love of the brethren, love one another earnestly from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding Word of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. John's. I'm going to do something um, a little unconventional this morning, something I have never really done before, uh, but we live in unconventional days. Uh, I'm going to uh, read the Gospel and offer it more uh, as a meditation than a sermon. The idea being that, you know, this story of the road to Emmaus is so rich. I mean, Luke tells it so well, it's just like being there. So my thought is, why not be there? Why not put ourselves into the story? So I'm going to read it through. I'm going to comment as we go. But I want you to join me on this road. Maybe it helps to close your eyes as I read it through. That very day, 
Two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. So it's Easter evening. All these things that have happened refer to Jesus' crucifixion. These disciples don't know about the resurrection. That's what's happening for them. What's happening for you? What do you um, want to talk about? What's going on in your life? Disappointments? Aches and pains? Ups? Downs? Just take that moment right now to Think about your life. You're on a road, right? And what are you thinking about? What are you preoccupied by? What's happening in your life right now? While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Maybe you haven't recognized him, but Jesus is with you, too on whatever road you are walking. And he invites you into a conversation. What are you thinking about? What's eating you? How's your heart? Why do you look sad? What do you say to him? Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped past tense. They are hoping no more. Reeling from the recent past, afraid of the future, what are these two supposed to do now? They're broken hearted. Is there anything breaking your heart today? Are you afraid of the future? Are you ashamed or regret the past? Whatever it is, talk to this stranger on the road about it. One of these disciples on the road continues saying, Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. 
They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. You hear in these words the note of a kind of resigned doubt. It says actually in the passage previous to this that none gathered in the upper room on Easter morning believed these women who came back from the tomb. And the fact that these two are on the road on Easter evening, not in Jerusalem, not waiting around to see what happens next, means that they cut their losses. They cashed in their chips. They're broke. Their faith is broken. So what are you finding hard to believe today? And Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. I think we should probably take Jesus' chastisement here with a bit of tongue in cheek. Foolish men, slow to uh, believe. You know, after all, no one else on the planet believes at this point. Nobody thought it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer. Jesus knows this. But he also knows how the story goes. Economy or protect our hearts from all danger. But Jesus begins to teach the disciples that the Son of God has to suffer. And how this is the story of Scripture, a story about death and resurrection. Now, we don't know exactly where he took them in the Old Testament. But here's a little quote from an early Christian who was reading the Old Testament. His name is Melito of Sardis. He wrote around the year 150. Not so long after these events. And for him, he saw Jesus throughout the Old Testament. Here's what he wrote. Christ is the Passover lamb of our salvation. It is he who was bound when Abel was murdered when Isaac was bound. When Jacob was exiled. When Joseph was sold. When Moses was exposed. When the lamb was slain. When David was persecuted. When the prophets were dishonored. Jesus is showing that the suffering and the death and then the eventual resurrection is the story of the scriptures. It's his story as the Messiah. And it's our story as well. How does that change the conversation that we are having with this mysterious stranger? on the road. Can you hear him say something like, I know what you're going through. Everybody has suffered. It's a story of the Bible. You're afraid, I've been afraid. 
Your heart is broken. My heart is broken. You've been rejected. I've been rejected. I had to die. Maybe he's saying, this is our story. Together. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. Think of that for a second. Jesus wants to stay with you. He wants to be your guest. He wants to be in your home. Lucky you. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. We need to slow down here. He took the bread, right? He chose the loaf, got his hands on it. Maybe just like he's chosen you. Maybe how he has his hands on your life. Here he's got the hands on, on the bread. And then he blesses it. Probably said, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. But again, you're like that. He brought you forth from the earth. He decided he wanted you to be part of his world, his creation. You are blessed. He blesses you. And now he broke the loaf. The bread was broken. The Messiah was broken. You and I are broken. And that's part of the story. Your story. The story of the scriptures. The story that God is writing in our world. Even today, it has through broken, redeemed, dying and rising people like you and me. So the bread is broken and then he gave the bread, it says. He, he gave it to the others. Just like he gave his own life for the life of the world. Just like he was the true bread which came down from heaven. Just like we, too, like this bread, are given as well. He sends us out, chosen, blessed, broken people to comfort the afflicted, to heal those who are sick, to find those who are lost, to bind up the broken hearted. Can you recognize that you too are given? That you too are sent? You and the bread and Jesus are all together as chosen, last, broken, and given people. What do you want to say to God about that? And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the 
scriptures, you know, how they recognize him. Do you recognize him? Their hearts are uh, strangely warm. Was there a part of this sermon where you felt that burning in your heart? Like God was saying or confirming something for you to hear today. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered, and those who were with them, who said, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Now these disciples go back to their community back on the road, but this time toward the place that the resurrection happened, not running away from it. How does your time with Jesus, knowing him in scripture, in breaking of the bread, knowing who he really is on the road with you, food for the journey, your daily bread. Hope for another day. How does your time with Jesus put you back on the road of your life? I'm going to pray in closing a prayer from evening prayer based on this wonderful, rich, passage as we conclude our time together. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Awaken our hearts and awaken hope that we may know thee as thou art revealed in scripture and in the breaking of bread. Grant is for the sake of thy life. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come in glory, judge the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, that together in thy love, reveal thy glory in the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and truth, that they may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. 
Give us all a reverence for the earth as thine own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to thy honor and glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. And grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. Bring them the joy of thy salvation. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the mission and ministry of the Diocese of Dallas, especially for George and for Michael, our bishops, for St. Mark's in Irving, St. Paul's in Greenville, Holy Trinity by the Lake, Keith Rockwall for Redeemer in Irving, for all their clergy and all their people. We pray for the Church of our Savior, Suez, our sister congregation in Egypt, especially Ehab, their priests. We pray for the outreach of our parish. For St. John's Episcopal School, Austin Street Center, White Rock Center of Hope, Gateway of Grace, Refugee Ministry, Genesis Women's Shelter, Kellerman's Mission in Uganda, Kairos Prison Ministry, Reinhardt Elementary School. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are expecting, especially Catherine and Michelle. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to thy mercy all who have died, that thy will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John, the Baptist, and all thy saints in thine eternal kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. I'm going to add two collects today, one for the sick and one for the president and all those in authority. First, a prayer for the sick. The Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need. We humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve all who are sick, for whom our prayers are desired. Look upon them with the eyes of mercy, comfort them with a sense of thy goodness, preserve them from the temptations of the enemy, and give them patience under their affliction. In thy good time, restore them to health and enable them to lead the residue of this life in thy faith and fear into thy glory. And grant that finally they may dwell with thee in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care. That being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness. Make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done by what we have left undone, we have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, comfort you with his Holy Spirit, lead you into all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with our spirit. Thanks so much for joining us online this third Sunday in Easter. Thanks, too, for uh, your comments. Um, I love how parishioners are expressing appreciation for the music, especially um, and the way we are able to encourage one another online, even while we're not able yet to come back uh, together. Next week is Youth Sunday. We have Youth Sunday every, uh, every spring, usually, um, in the season of Easter. And so we'll be honoring our uh, graduates. But we're also trying to find a way to incorporate uh, young people in the service uh, this year, even while we're shut in. So if, uh, if you've got a youngster in your family, 
look for an email soon from um, either uh, Janae Eckert or me uh, inviting uh, you to participate in a way where we're trying to show our uh, young people throughout the parish, give them some words to say in celebrating their place among us in the body of Christ. So look for that and then tune in next uh, Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for Youth Sunday. Also, we'll see you uh, online uh, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, and throughout the week for morning prayer. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.